Okay, so today we're going to discuss about the autoimmunity. Uh, we'll be discussing about the two main uh, autoimmune disorders, which includes the SLE or the systemic lupus erythematosus. The other one we have here, the RA or the rheumatoid arthritis. So we define here the autoimmunity as the production of your auto reactive cells or your autoantibody, which eventually try to cause your damage with your tissues or organs, basically because of the formation of your immune complex, which eventually try to activate our complement and even your phagocytes, and it become here a complement mediated damage. Okay, so Ehrlich's describe here the autoimmune disorders or the autoimmunity as horror autotoxicos or simply the fear of the self-poisoning because, again, you are producing an antibody which try to react with your self-antigen. Okay, to prevent the autoimmunity, we have here the two processes or mechanism here that protects our body against the production of your autoimmunity. The first one, we have here the central tolerance. The central tolerance occur here in our lymphoid tissues. So, in our lymphoid tissues, as, with, as what we have discussed with the development of your B lymphocytes and even T lymphocytes that undergo a negative selection process and even a positive reaction, a positive selection process that would uh, eliminate here, those are uh, T lymphocytes or the B lymphocytes which are able to react with our self antigen, could that recognize between self and non self, and therefore prevents here. Um, it try to remove that the autoreactive B and the telephocyte by the process of the apoptosis. The second one, we have here the peripheral tolerance. This peripheral tolerance here occurs in our peripheral circulation, and that's uh, with uh, primarily the function of your T subset populations. The helper one, it protects our body here against the production of the autoimmunity because it try to release, it help here release um, pro-inflammatory cytokines and the T helper to on the other hand try to react with the foreign antigen and the T reg regulate here the balance between T helper 1 and T helper 2. Okay we have here the mechanism here for the autoimmunity so the first one we have here the major histocompatibility complex or the HLA association so example for that we have your HLA B27 would have a greater chance of developing here ankylosing spondylitis. Another one, we have here the release of the sequestered antigen into our peripheral circulation. So when we speak about the sequestered antigen, so they are being prevented here to, to go in our blood brain, to go in our peripheral circulation. So they're just being confined in particular area in our body, but they are not found in peripheral circulation. So once they leak to your peripheral circulation, it will be recognized as a foreign antigen and therefore, your body will be producing here an autoantibody directed to that one. Because in the first place, that's your self-antigen. Only that, the peripheral circulation, which normally is not present on that. So, example for that, we have here the myelin-based protein. they found here in the axon. We try to protect the axon of your neurons. So, nasa CNS natin siya dapat. Then, we have, this, we have here the sperm cell. Okay, the sperm cell here in our... Uh, basically could be found in your testes. So they're not found normally in the peripheral circulation. Then another one we have here the polyclonal mimicry where there's some antigen here try to um, eventually try to resemble here our self antigen and therefore try to result here to the production of your autotypes. Example we have here your VP2 with the polio virus. We have P3 for the measles and we have also the myelin basic protein. The fourth one, we have here the polyclonal B cell activation, that's the effects on your B cell. And that's result here for the production of, of your abnormal antibody. So it may be because of the suppression of the expression of key signaling molecules. Second one, we have dysregulation in the production of your cytokines. The third one, because of the changes in the production of your B cell subset population. Okay, so we start our discussion with the first autoimmune disorder. We have here the lupus erythematosus. So we classify, we have here the different classification of your lupus erythematosus. The first one we have here, the discoid. So when we speak about the discoid, this one is a cutaneous 
type of the lupus erythematosus. So basically, try to affect only the skin. So they could be found here in the skin of your scalp, your neck, or even your face. So this most likely do not infect or do not affect our internal organs. So just only um, limited to the cutaneous manifestation. This account here for 10% of the population of the lupus erythematosus. The second one, we have here the SLE or the systemic lupus erythematosus. For this one, it affects here your skin, your joints, plus your internal organ, making this one systemic. So it affects here for the internal organs, it affects here your heart, your lungs, your brain, and even your kidney. So this account for approximately 70% of the population, the patients having the lupus erythematosus. Then we have here the drug-induced type of the lupus erythematosus so here induced by the drugs hydralazine, hydrochloride, and procainamide hydrochloride where the patient tried to develop here an anti-nuclear antibody in the form of your anti-RNP, ribonucleoprotein. Then we have here the neonatal type of the lupus erythematosus. So basically that one is being caused here by the transplacential Transplacental transfer of your antinuclear antibody from the mother who is infected during the pregnancy and uh, it tried to transmit here the antibody, antinuclear antibody in the form of your anti uh, RO Robert, that's your soluble substance A, and anti LA or anti LAN, that's your soluble substance B. So these are the antinuclear antibodies. Okay, so for the neonatal lupus here, it affects the skin the heart, and even the blood of the uh, neonatal patient. It's also manifested here by the appearance of the rash. The rash here usually appears within one week after six months of the age of the baby. And after that one is tried to disappear. Okay, the next one, we go with your systemic lupus erythematosus. So systemic lupus erythematosus here characterized as a chronic systemic inflammatory disease which try to affect here approximately 15 to 50 out of the 100,000 of the U.S. population. So the mean age for that, we have here 20 to 40 years old. So high risk here are found for these patients. So are number one, among the um, uh, race here, we have the African-American and Hispanic more than the white population or the white American. And among between the male and the female patients, so it's more high risk here for the female uh, patients compared to the male patients because number one, uh, for the female, especially here during their pregnancy and menopause, postpartum. So that is because of number one, because of their hormones, the estrogen. The estrogen here would increase the risk here of the expression of the genes for the production of your SLE. Another one we have here, the danger would be the production of your antiphospholipid antibody. So antiphospholipid antibody is uh, an antibody that's directed towards the phospholipid, phospholipid component of our cell. So that would try to activate here much of your coagulation factors. And once, once your coagulation factors here has been activated, so it would result here to the clot formation. So the patient would have thrombosis. And this also result here to the miscarriage. Okay, so it always siya kasi nabura kanina. Okay, so we have here other pathology here for the predisposition here that would try to account for the uh, production of your SLE. So another one, we have your genetic uh, predisposition. So the patients identified here would be the HLA uh, D, the DP, and the HLA DQ. Another one for the pathology here related to your SLE because of the deficiency with your complement components C1Q, C2, and C4. And therefore, try to trigger here the much of the not able to eliminate the antigen antibody complex. Another one we have here the abnormality with your uh, phagocytosis because of the defective na FC portion of your IgG. We serve here as the receptor binding site for your phagocytes, primarily for your B lymphocytes, macrophage, neutrophil, and dendritic cells, which try to prevent here the activation of your phagocytes. You could also have your environmental factors which try to trigger also the production appearance of your SLE in the form of the exposure to UV lights 
I've also here the drug medications. That's what we have discussed kanina. We have here your hydralazine, hydrochloride, and perlinamide hydrochloride. It could also be related here to the presence of other infectious agents. Okay, so we have here the signs and symptoms of your SLE. So it started here with the you know, specific signs and symptoms in the form of fever, weight loss, malaise, anorexia. The followed here by your polyarthralgia or your arthritis manifestation with the joint pains. And lastly, you could have also here the presence of the rash here. Uh, however, the rash here, the typical butterfly rash, that could be found here within the bridge of the nose and the cheeks area. Uh, only present among 30 to 40 percent population with the SLE. So, I mean to say that all SLE would have that typical na butterfly rash. That will give you characters wolf like appearance that gives here the name lupus erythematosus. Again, this one has been triggered here much of the exposure. The rash most likely um, found also in some areas of your body which have been exposed to the UV light. Okay, then we have your other skin lesion manifestation. So we have the orticaria, we have also the angioedema, nanthrombotic, cytopenic purpura, nanthrombotic, nanthrombocytopenic purpura with the production of your cryoglobulins. We have also the skin formation, so the people of ang skin. And we have also here the diffuse patchy lesion in the scalp with the postural, postural lesion here found in the scalp of the patient. The another one, we have the lupus profundus or the lupus paniculitis, characterized here by the subcutaneous lesion nodules with the yellowish discharge, yellowish sleepy discharge. And we have here the renal phenomenon characterized by the discoloration of the, the extremities here, including the finger and toes area, with your nails become brittle because of that, and that's because of this anti-nuclear antibody in the form of your anti-RNP. A correction uh, in your drug induced, the anti nuclear antibody for that is your anti histone. Anti histone, we'll be discussing that one later on. But here in the Reynolds phenomenon, which has been identified by Maurice Reynolds, okay, so that's basically here this anti RNP. Okay, then we have here the renal involvement. So basically, the most dangerous complication of this autoimmune disorder with the immune complex deposition here in your glomerulus would be your diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis. This is characterized by the thickening of the glomerular basement membrane because of the deposition of your immune complex. We try to trigger here the activation of the complement which try to cause damage on our glomerulus. And uh, eventually, a complication for that would be your renal failure and death related to your SLE because of this one, renal failure. Okay, now we have here the other manifestation of your SLE. So we have the lymphadenopathy, the inflammation of your lymph nodes, followed here by the serocytis, which is characterized here by the accumulation of the fluids here in your parietal and visceral membrane in your serous membrane basically that's your pleural peritoneal pleural peritoneal and pericardial body cavities third one we have the mucoskeletal with the muscle manifestation in the joint manifestation in the form of your joint pain polyarthralgia and arthritis manifestation the next one we have here the gastrointestinal tract <coughs> Involvement in characterized here by the infarction and perforation of the bowel. Another one, we have the cardiac involvement characterized by tachycardia, pericarditis, and ventricular enlargement. Another one, we have the CNS involvement in the form of the neuropsychosis characterized here by uh, uh, primarily by uh, seizure and um, depression and even the okay, psychosis. And hematological manifestation here decrease ang ating mga blesses, anemia, leukopenia, lymphopenia, and we have also the thrombocytopenia. Okay, then we have here the criteria, 11 here criteria for you to identify someone to be positive here for the SLE. Just need to have here 4 out of the 11, 4 check out of the 11, then you'll be considered here as having this SLE. First one, we have the malar, we have also the discoid rash. 
and then one for the sensitivity, oral ulcer, arthritis, serositis, renal, hematologic, immunologic, neurological disorders, including here the presence of your antinuclear antibody. Then again, you just need to have your four of this for you to consider to be having that SLP. Okay, now we have here some immunologic manifestation with the SLE. So, first we have here the formation of the LE cell. Okay, the LE cell here is a phagocytic cell. Basically, this is a neutrophil. We try to ingest a dead um, nuclear material coming from a dead cell. And this is being induced here by the LE serum factor. You call that one as your anti-DNP, the oxynucleoprotein. Which only is, which is also one of your anti-nuclear antibody. Okay, but we could use here the LE cell test here to identify patients who have SLE. But again, not all SLE patient would have here positive for the LE cell. Another mechanism here for the uh, for your SLE, we have the polyclonal B cell activation. In the polyclonal B cell activation, here would be the characterized by alteration in in your production of your T helper 1 and T helper 2, which result here with the overproduction of your abnormal B lymphocytes, and those are autoreactive B lymphocytes. We try to produce here much of your autoreactive antibody. And that's being triggered also here by the interleukin 10, which helps here your B lymphocytes to further differentiate. However, ang pinoproduce dito ay abnormal na B lymphocytes, and therefore try to cause here severity of the uh, immunologic damage in the body of the patients. Another one, we have here the formation of the immune complex, which is not cleared in our body because, number one, you have the effective na phagocytosis because of the defects in the B cell, uh, because of the defects in the IgGFC receptor of your IgG. Another one, because of the decreased complement components. And lastly, we have here the production of your antibody directed towards your, directed towards your double-stranded DNA.